Well, our next speaker is a five-time Olympic medalist, and he was a speed skater. Let's see if I can, uh, let me uh, fire up my phone again here. It, of course, it timed out. Forgot to do that deal. Let me see. Let me get it. Okay. Five-time uh, winter Olympic medalist, speed skater, six-time world record holder, 50-time world inline speed skating champion, First man to skate 10,000 meters in 13 minutes. He was late for dinner. Um, he's a team leader from the Woodlands, Texas, and most importantly, he's been married 14 years with three kids. He gave me a squeeze on the shoulder, and I about passed out. The dude is strong. That was like a Dr. Spock grab. I'm like, I didn't tell you, dude, that hurt. He's like, he's like if you hug him, he's all muscle. He's my idol. I want to be you when I grow up. Help me welcome from the Woodlands, Texas, Chad Hedrick. Give him a hand, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Very, very excited, blessed, honored to be here today. This, this culture at EXP is something that you just don't find, and I am just elated to be a part of it. So thanks so much for allowing me to be here today. Um, as Brent said, 2006-2010 uh, Winter Olympic speed skater. Uh, I'm going to share my story, okay? Gold to sold, it is my untold story. Uh, I grew up and uh, my dad owned a roller rink in Spring, Texas, which is in North Houston. Let me tell you a little story. I'm going to put this down for one minute. But as my parents operated our family business running the roller rink, my dad, instead of hiring a babysitter, decided that I would stay there at the rink and skate all day. And this is what it looked like. I got two hands full, so work with me, guys, here. So when I got about 17 months old, my dad put me in a chair with conventional roller skates just like this, and he tightened the wheels as tight as they would go. And he let me up, and I learned how to walk on skates. When I started getting my balance, he put me back in that chair and he loosened those wheels just a little bit. And I started rolling a little bit. And six months later, I was flying around that roller rink like you wouldn't believe. I lived for the roller rink. I spent six to eight hours a day skating with a pocket full of quarters, playing video games and eating Frito pies, believe it or not. Breakfast of champions, right? Started skating, it's crazy. You know, all my friends and I, we like to skate fast. How many people went to public skating session growing up and they had the fast skate and the races? Yeah, that was my life, right? So what happened was my friends and I just loved to skate fast. We ended up starting this speed skating team and my dad was the coach, okay? By the time I was seven years old, we were traveling across all across different parts of Texas to different roller rinks. And then at eight years old, I started traveling all across the nation. And these are on conventional roller skates, right? I became a national champion for the first time just before I turned nine. And it was a crazy life, but that's all that I knew, and I loved it, right? But I can honestly say at the age of eight, I knew that I wanted to be the fastest speed skater in the world. I know there's people that are 18 years old going to college that don't know what to do with their life, and I knew what I wanted to do at eight, right? So, 50 world championships after staying dedicated my whole life and skating and traveling and, and you know, a lot of things were bypassed. I didn't go to prom. I honestly didn't have a lot of friendships and relationships in high school due to my commitment to my sport. Five Winter Olympic gold medals, or gold medals, five, 
five Olympic medals. It took an un undying, relentless work ethic and sacrifice on my behalf to be able to do that. And that's the one thing that I'm most proud about is that every day, my day of work, over time, brought home gold medals for our country. You know, we skated on the conventional roller skates, but then we went to inline skates when I was about 14 years old. And you see those 50 world championship titles. I traveled to 42 different countries from, from the time I was 16 until I was 26. Uh, made six figures by the time I was 19 years old. Uh, my first sponsor was this startup company. I don't know, you may have heard of them. They're called Oakley Sunglasses. A guy came up to me after a race and said, hey man, I saw what you were doing. You're just like a little kid. You almost won that race. I go, yeah, so. He said, I want you to wear my glasses. You're going to travel all around the world wearing Oakley sunglasses. That was when I was 16. So over 10 years, 50 world championship titles, over 40 different countries. But I'm seeing blank faces right now because nobody knows what inline speed skating really is, right? I was the best in a sport that nobody really even knew existed. And that kind of sucked. So I wanted the notoriety. I wanted people to know how hard I worked to win. So what did I do? This boy from Spring, Texas ended up moving to Salt Lake City, Utah in 2003 for a new journey, a journey in ice speed skating. I actually had to buy my first jacket when I got to Utah, believe it or not. But the journey began. And I'll tell you, when I got there, I was, of course, the world champion for many years with inline speed skating. And you... You go and you get your butt whooped when you start, right? And ultimately, it was really, really hard to take. But after six months and almost going home a couple times and throwing my hands in the air, I looked myself in the mirror and I said, I'm going to do it. And after six months, I qualified for the U.S. national team. 17 months after I started, I became world champion. And 26 months after I started, I won the first gold medal for our country in Torino, Italy. I want you guys to take a quick look at this here. Becoming a winner. What becoming a winner used to mean to me and how that's different now. Becoming a winner, I just told you guys, notoriety. I wanted to be famous. It was all about me. There was a lot of pride. There was a lot of entitlement. Freedom, of course. You're the best in the world at anything. There's a lot of advantages that you can have. And then, of course, finances. I wanted to be rich. I was this snot-nosed 28-year-old kid, won a gold medal, thought the microphones were going to be in my face. Everybody wanted to hear what I had to say. Everybody wanted to see what I could do. But the fact of the matter is, I was in this speed skating bubble, and when I got out of it, nobody really cared. Chasing greatness. I told y'all, this was the first trophy I won at six years old. This is where it all began. began. And I accomplished what I did because of a true passion for what I did. It never felt like work. I've been around the equator four times on a pair of skates in my life. And never once did it feel like work. I was there ready to do it because I wanted to be the best. There's a picture of me inline speed skating. Y'all are like, what's that, you know? The awards. There's a, a 2006 Winter Olympic uh, photo there on my way to gold. There's all five of my Olympic medals. I, I'm proud to say that I was the second speed skater ever behind a guy named Eric Hyden you guys may have heard of. 
uh, five different medals in five different distances. So that was a great accomplishment for me. And then that is, that's what it's all about. A lifelong journey of never quitting to win and crossing the finish line. Life after winning, this is what I'm talking about. You've got a life of, you know, um, what's important to you as a youngster and how you can evolve and grow as a man and as a person. And life after winning, there's a lot of disappointments along the way. In fact, in 2010, I went to the Olympics and I got a silver and a bronze medal after training four more years and it was very, very disappointing for me. Although it was a great accomplishment, it wasn't what I had before and I, I had my eyes on another gold medal. I'll tell you, there was this moment when I was in Torino, Italy, and they announced my name in a piazza in the middle of Italy as Team USA and put the gold medal around my neck. And it was a moment that forever changed me. It was a moment where I realized when they announced Chad Hedrick, Team USA, gold medal, 5,000 meter. I'm up high, I've got thousands of people watching. They put the gold medal around my neck. And all of a sudden, you would think this crowning achievement in my life would be, I would just be head in the clouds, just this feeling like you'd never experienced before. But I quickly felt like I was defined by my sport and nothing more. I had manipulated a lot of people in the process. I didn't have a lot of real relationships in my life. I, was, I really did a lot of things just to gain .02 seconds. And I, reali I realized that I had a lack of purpose and that my sport defined me and I needed something more. I was unfulfilled. My soul was empty. And if the, the one thing you shoot for your whole life, if you do it and you're unfulfilled, well, doesn't that raise a red flag for you? Defined by my sport. I'll tell you what, guys. This was a moment that I thought was going to be the greatest day in my life accomplishing this, this feat. But it actually became the most transformative moment in my life because I realized it was all about me. I realized my pride and my arrogance and in my entitlement was not the life that I desired. Since then, oh man, in 2010, I retired. I retired, I didn't have a college degree. I didn't have a formal education and to be quite honest, my skills were sharp, literally sharp. And at one thing, and that was speed skating. And I had to start my life over again. I floundered around with several jobs. I remember uh, in 2010, I think I made $400,000. And I came home and I took a job for $65,000 in the oil and gas business, which is what everybody does in Houston. And I was working for people at 32 year, years old that had been in the job and their job the same age as me that had been in the job 10 years and I had to answer to them. You think that was humbling? It was the hardest, hardest moment of my life and I really didn't know what the next step was and my identity took a, a huge, huge hit. And that is when I realized that there was something more for me and it was living a life beyond myself I became a man of faith I became and I invited Jesus into my heart I was I was at at the end of it all I needed something greater. So I called this guy. He was a big real estate guy in the Woodlands, Texas, one of the big mega agents. And I said, hey, I'm interested in doing real estate. He 
said, okay, well, you can meet my wife and I over. Bring your wife. We'll have dinner. He hired me on the spot. I worked for him for six months, and I realized, hey, I'm working my tail off, and you're taking all my money. <laughs> and I realized I wasn't going to learn much, so I went on, and I did my own thing. That was seven years ago, guys. Seven years ago. I realized one thing. I, I knew I was a salesman. But the one thing that I realized is that selling oil and gas products is going gonna, is gonna to equate to about 0.01% of my, of my contact list, right? Very niche product. And I thought to myself, I was like, man, everybody needs a home, wants a home, or needs to sell a home. Heck, I know a lot of people, right? So I took this dive, right? Seven years ago in real estate. Now today... Because of my faith, winning looks completely different. And by the way, this is why EXP is so special to me. It's about serving clients. This is one of my first clients. That's the first home I sold. 6007 Weisinger. Never forget, will you? I want you guys to take a moment. I talked about the pride. I talked about being defined by my sport and looking back and accomplishing what I accomplished and how I felt afterwards. I want everybody to close their eyes real quick. What's your biggest fear in your business? We all have one. Think about it. Everybody got it? Well, I can tell you what mine is. Mine was. My, mine was becoming successful in real estate and thinking it was all about me again just like I did when I skated. That is why, for me, as a single agent, when I started, I, I felt like I was on this hamster wheel every day. Like, man, I just, I, I need one more client. We're going to do the same thing. It's Thursday. On Friday, we're going to do the same thing. It's a hamster wheel. And I realized every time I went and I got my check and I went to the title company and I took the infamous picture with the the closing gift, blah, blah, blah. I realized, hey, that, that relationship did mean a lot, but I realized that tomorrow is just going to be the exact same. I realized really quickly, I needed a crew. I needed a crew to help. This group of agents right here, and most of these agents just in the last year have doubled their business. They doubled their business. Some of them have tripled their business. I remember as an athlete what the Olympic Committee provided for me to be the absolute best that I could be. The tools, the resources, the encouragement, the leadership, all of those things, whether it be coach, massage therapist, skate technician, all of these things were so imperative to be able to be successful. So that's how I built my business. Every day I give them everything they need. So at the end of the day, they have to look themselves in the mirror and say, I did it or I didn't do it, right? Today, real estate's offered me an opportunity to be a servant, to serve people around me. And remember I said, there was a lack of relationships in my life before as an athlete because it was all about me. Isn't it funny how God positioned me in a business that's all about relationships? It's been so therapeutic and it's been unbelievable and so healthy for me to be able to get out of my comfort zone and grow as a human. Wednesdays is our team meeting and it's, it's the highlight of my week knowing that I, I made a difference, that my team, my admin, our staff, 
made a difference in helping people around me. The greatest trophies in my life, my, my wife Lindsay came with me here. Uh, she's, my, she's my next, she's, I'm going to be her sponsor here soon. She doesn't know it. <laughs> Life's all about impact. You know, I, this Christmas was a crazy time for my team to come to my house. And we had a, our team party and I looked around my house. And I looked at all the families that we are working diligently to support and help them grow their business. And man, there's no better feeling on earth. No better feeling. And I was just taken back. I didn't know how special it was going to be for me. There's my daughter, 2010. She was born uh, right before the Olympics. So she had a hat right there. It says, my daddy's faster than yours. Pretty cool. <laughs> That's my team at our, uh, our client appreciation event. This is our family in Gulf Shores. Every, every July, we go to Gulf Shores, Alabama. And then there's my wife. Actually, the gold medal is my second biggest prize, obviously. All right, we play to win, but winning looks different now, doesn't it? We play to serve. Clients, and this, this, is, this is what it's all about here, this, this whole thing here, and why I'm here at EXP, which I just joined two weeks ago. We serve our clients, we serve our teammates, but at EXP, we have the opportunity to serve agents. We're one team. I went to Vegas. I came from this brokerage. It starts with a C and ends with an S. I'm not going to tell you what the name is. But, but I, came, I, I went to EXPCon and I met Brent, I met Brent and, and a few others. And I had everything but a mustache on so nobody knew I was there, right? And I went there, and the one thing I came back, and I said, holy cow, everybody's working together. Everybody wants to help everybody. It's awesome. I came from a completely different world. I mean, back when I was 26, I probably wouldn't have liked that. I would have been like, oh, you know, whatever. But in this business, that is so refreshing that everybody wants to help everybody. And man, I am so glad now as part of EXP to call you guys family. With EXP, we can leave a legacy. My wife, she doesn't, she's not really involved in real estate. When I told her about this EXP thing, she was like, oh no, we're not doing that. Another, another brokerage change, right? I said, babe, you don't even know. You don't even know what's going on at this place. You don't know. Leaving a legacy for our families, man. The work that we put in. The relationships that we build. Everything. It's for each other and our family. Mm. I can tell you what. There's other companies that don't care about my family. I've experienced for the last three weeks what that's like. My daughter, Harper, she's 12. Hadley, 14. And then my little guy. That's Hogan. Guys, we have a chance to make a difference. We have a chance to make a difference. One of the things that was so awesome we pull up to get our badges yesterday. There's charities. Charities that we can be a part of. Corporate America isn't like that. Brent, I commend you for that. I know that's a very special uh, uh, charity that you support. It was refreshing for me to come here and see somebody wanting to give back. It's awesome. Awesome. 
I'm glad to be a part of all this with, with every one of you. I hope you guys come by, chat with me, say hello. And I am so, so honored to be here and speak with you guys here today. And I wish you guys all the best. Thank you so much for having me. Give it to Brad. There's a gold medal.